All right, this is a replay review for Noodle Cup, who is right here. So for those of you who have never played Erebos Lakes, Erebos Lakes is a kind of standard 6-2 um, frontline backline map. So generally speaking, you will have a lane that runs between these two people, a lane that runs between these two people, a water lane that runs between these two people. Noodle Cup will be facing off against the Sim and Yecho will be facing off against Gold Police. So the lanes normally go like that. Then you will generally have a Tekker who's in this position because you want to take uh, advantage of the Geo. And you'll generally have an air player in one of these two spots. It doesn't actually matter where they are. Generally, the air player is here, but honestly, they're interchangeable. The last remaining person, which in this case would be RDS Commander and one of the people back here, actually plays Island. So they normally will get a transport and then come here and then they will fight for the island like that. Uh, sometimes it's played differently, but generally speaking, that's how higher level games on this map play out. So let's take a look at our boy noodle cup so first things first your calm drop is not in a great spot see how you're here and you're gonna have to build this and then walk and then walk this green circle is your build radius if you just drop in the center of these you can actually build all three of them without walking and you save yourself a ton of time at the start so instead of dropping there drop in the middle it'll be much much better okay See, so you have to walk here if that's why you want to drop in the middle. If you drop in the middle, you'd have to almost not walk at all. I think you can probably tap most of this without walking. OK, so first thing um, on any three max map like this, there's sort of two optimal ways to start off your economy, start off your build. So you can either go max, max, wind, max to make sure you get all your maxes as soon as possible, and then you can build more energy after. Or if the wind is bad, and in this case, the wind isn't great, you can go max, max, max solar. The reason you do that is because you want to get all your maxes as soon as possible. And if you go max, max, wind, max, you won't east all as long as the wind is above like six. Or if you go max, max, max solar, you won't east all either. There will be like half a second where you're about to east all, but because solars don't require any energy, basic solars are zero energy, you'll be fine. You can go solar, solar, or solar, wind. So in that case, I would say instead of dropping there, drop in the middle, go max, max, max solar, and then probably wind, depending on what happens after. Okay. So let's see, you're going to go double solo here. So this is honestly too much energy at the start because you want to take this. I would have taken this max first. See how you're losing all of that. Um, it doesn't feel like it's a lot, but you probably could have had this max, I don't know, 30 seconds ago, which is another 60 metal, um, which is actually a substantial, especially early game. So you're going to go vehicles to fight your lab. I think that's completely fine. I think there's a lot of flat space, so I think vehicles totally make sense. Um, one thing that you can do on this map that, oh no, we didn't finish it. Okay, good. So I like that you queued stuff up before. Um, one thing you can do on this map is if you have a bot player like this, you can just buy a res bot from him. JT Lane is famous for this, where he'll always play vehicles and then he'll always beg res bots. But, you know, you can just pay him 110 metal and then you can eat all of the reclaim on this map. Because if we look at it right, there's let's go in the other corner. There's 1500 metal, but there's 150,000 energy. And that's like the easiest simplest way to actually just get a bunch of eco is to eat all this stuff back here so i would say this could be a situation where you might want to actually buy a res bot maybe not right away but relatively early on so that you can eat all this energy and then kind of jumpstart your economy you're going to start off with a rover um i think that's completely fine this is a really big map so if you did want to greed you could go like two con into five rover or something but one rover is like the more aggressive scouting play and that's not wrong that's just a personal preference so okay the problem that you're gonna have here though is before you calm walk you need to use your commander's build power so if you look at your lab your lab only has a hundred build power your commander has 300 build power 
So before you leave your lab, you want to have your commander here and you want him boosting your lab until you get out generally at least one constructor. Sometimes you could do more than one, but I think generally you always want to boost him at least for one. If you do that, then you'll have way more build power to scale much, much quicker. So you're going to send your calm kind of up towards the front. Okay. You're moving and all right, and we've got our first one. So you're going to scout with that. I like that. And you're going to get your con and he's going to do that. Okay. So you're going to take a max along the way and then you're going to come up here and take more mexes. I'm okay with this so far. Um, I think there's something to be said about like maybe trying to get to the front first and put down LLTs or even trying to run on the opponent's side and put down LLTs, just depending on what you see with your rover. Um, that actually maybe would not have worked. Let's look at your view. Just because he flew. And if you see transports flying, then you know you won't be able to get there first. So I would say if you do want to kind of do this early calm walk, it makes more sense to go up farther. But this is also going to work here. And you're going to throw down solars. So hold on. Let's look at your queue here. So you have some blitz and blitz are more of raiding units. Um, but this is a big map and so you want fast units to respond. I can understand that. Um, I would have built probably more cons a little bit sooner because you're still lacking on build power. A lot of times you want to dump as much of your metal as possible before you move your commander out. The other thing that you really want to do and why you want more cons is that you need to start scaling your wind production because this is a really good wind map. Okay, so you've got these. So see how you're super e-starved? That's what the res bot would help with. And that's what additional cons would help with. If your commander kind of comes here and can hold this, then you can do some some a little bit more greed sort of behind it here. The other thing is you want these cons so that you can take all these empty mexes. It's always good to take as many empty mexes as possible. OK, so we've got our blitz. Radar also would be huge right here because you want the high and the low ground. And OK, perfect. So you actually put the radar down there, but you're still suffering from E right and so this is a situation where you need to do a little bit better balance on your build queue between military units and constructors right you could do say three blitz and then a con and then two janus and then a con but you need more cons out early one so you have more build power and then two so that you can literally just do this and back right you can just go boom 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 and you forget them and they spend the whole game just scaling your wind And you can tell, right, if you look just if you look at your economy, so you have so much metal and so much energy. I mean, this isn't that much energy, but both your bars are relatively full. It's a sign that you're lacking build power. So you're addressing it with cons, which is great. But if you had built these cons sooner, you would have been able to do a lot more just because you would have had more build power. Also, if your commander had boosted, you would have had a lot more build power. OK, so now you're at the front. We still haven't seen what's over here yet, though, right? So we're going to throw down some LLTs, which I don't hate. I'd say you probably want to run these blitz up beforehand or even just build a rover and run it up because you don't know what's here, right? You see some dots. OK, sure. But we always want to try to be aggressive whenever we can. And you have a con coming to the front. So your biggest issue right now is e-scaling. And I would say even before this con moves to the front, I would have him building a bunch of wind all the way back here. I probably in this position, if you could have walked your commander all the way up and held this choke, I would say you could you probably want like four cons, right? You want a con that's going to come up here, take this, take this, take this and then build wind. And then you could get um, one con that's boosting this and you could get another con that's going to go and take all of these mexes. And if you aren't sure if a mex is yours or not, it's completely fine to just go take it, right? You're like, oh, wait, is this mine? Is this reds? I'm not sure. It's two metal a second. 
a T1 Max is 50 metal. So literally just take it all. And if later Red is like, hey, you know, he starts pinging and he's like, hey, 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 give me this, give me this, right? It's fine. If you hold it for 25 seconds, it pays for itself. So take all of these with another con, right? Have a con building wind back there. Another con building wind. Someone take those and then come back. Another con taking all these. Okay, so you recognize that you do have an energy problem and you're going to build basic solar. This is actually a good time for basic solar because you have no energy and basic solar requires zero energy to build. It would have been better, though, if you had just started to scale wind. And you're e-stalling really hard so you can't dump your metal because you're building LLTs on the front, a nano, and this so I'd say instead of that, you would probably just want to, even with your commander, just throw down some solars on the front because your commander can build solars incredibly quickly and you can always reclaim them later. Never feel bad about building solars because they're the one unit that you get 100% recovery from when you eat it, right? You don't recover energy, but you recover metal. They don't recover. They don't cost any energy. So just throw down a ton of solars like you're about to do here. It's just a slight build power mismatch. Okay, frontline nano is something that I like, but also let's just look. We can go at half speed. Oh, let's pause. Let's just look at the position you're in. We don't know what's here. Okay, we've seen a bunch of dots, but we're not 100% sure what this is, right? And maybe stuff has come in or come out, but we don't know and we see things moving. So it's good to build LLTs, but this could be like a bunch of cons. So you need to actually see what's there. And there's a few different ways to do it at T1. Um, radars actually have really, really good LOS. So something you can do on the front line sometimes is you can literally drop a frontline radar like there, and it might be able to see some of what's up here. The radar won't work, but the vision will work. Another thing you can do is whistlers have amazing LOS, right? 620. So you can build an early whistler and just kind of like move them up here and then you'll get vision potentially of everything that's up here so that you know, OK, can I attack or can I not attack? You've queued up basically a thousand metal worth of pop ups. And that could be something that's important to have, right? You might need that because there could be like an army of grunts here and you're like, oh my God, I'm going to get overrun. But it doesn't make sense to queue them up if you don't know what's here, right? Because this could just, these could all be LLTs and it's like, oh, my pop ups do nothing. You also have Janus and you have these idle units. I would say whenever you have Janus like this, just come up and poke, just see what's here because we don't know what's here. And if you know what's here, you can attack. You can do you know, kind of like whatever. All right, so you got your nano and now we're kind of starting to scale. So we still have all these unclaimed mexes. Oh man. Always get the mexes. And then um, another thing, cause it's about six minutes, relatively early on, you wanna take your geo cause geos are just amazing energy. You know, if the wind drops, you'll still have something. And all you really need to do to take a geo is drop an E storage and then have about plus 200 to 250 energy. And if you aren't building other things, you won't E stall on it. So you'll be able to just get this up relatively soon and you can kind of jumpstart your economy. Okay, you build a nano. And your radar here sees that, which is fine. But we haven't taken this mechs yet. I would have done this in the reverse order. I would say always take the mechs first and then do that. Even if you can't spend your metal, at least you can overflow it to your allies. And that's a positive thing. And your commander is reclaiming some E, which is cool. I mean, you were E stalling. But just look at your energy economy, right? Compared to everyone else on your team. Well, Yecho also doesn't have great energy economy at the moment, but he's spamming wind now and wind is relatively low, but everyone else is much, much higher than you. And you're only at 145. And that's kind of a sign like if you ever aren't sure if you're like, hey, I'm not sure if I have enough energy or not, you can always just look at the numbers on your team and be like, oh, wait, I'm at 145 and they're all here. Oh, I should probably build more energy. So in this situation, I would say. 
try to take the mexes like we talked about before try to take geo asap don't leave these mexes unclaimed right and then here i don't hate the nano where did the con go oh the cons building these so i don't I don't hate the nano because the nano can repair stuff. But again, we don't know what's here. And when you see all this fade, it's like, oh, there's a jammer. I would say a jammer is probably more useful than throwing down dragon's claws because the thousand metal that you're about to spend here could just be stouts and you could just run over the person here because there could be nothing here. But we don't know. And you see something on patrol, but you don't know what it is. So if you had Artie or something else, you can definitely chip. Uh, just because you don't have Artie now or don't have Whistlers now, it doesn't mean you can't just run up here and see what's here. And then also look at how wide this lane is, right? You could literally just send a scout like that, right? You could go take your blitz and run them through there or send scouts through there. Or just try to get more information. But because you aren't fighting, you aren't being aggressive, you don't know what you're fighting. And that's the real concern. All right, and you're building Janus. So, oh, all right, so we got some got some Shell Shockers, awesome. Janus are awesome if you're fighting into other units. Janus don't do that great into Pork because they overkill LLTs, they don't have great range, right? There's a lot of issues with them when you're fighting into Pork. So I like this artillery, but I say you maybe could have even not gone Janus and you could have just gotten this artillery sooner if you have an LLT forest. All right, and now you're taking these mexes, which is awesome. But there's still, oh my God, there's still so many unclaimed. So just to give you an idea, right? There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's 18 metal a second. You would literally double your economy if you just took it all. All right, other thing just in terms of timing. It's seven and a half minutes. You should have T2, right? So where is this guy? Yeah, this guy is giving out T2. If you look, generally I'll look at six if I'm not teching, so I know who is teching. And then if I have free metal around six minutes, I'll give it to them. But between six to eight minutes, always check your tecker because something that you desperately want and or need is T2 as soon as possible. When you up all these mexes, it's a big deal. And for you, it's an even bigger deal because advanced geos are absolutely amazing for energy income. They're one of the most efficient things in the game. Um, okay, so there's a little bit of a bombing run. Let's speed this up. So again, you're not scaling your energy economy. And you can solve this issue literally by doing what Yecho is doing. See? See what Red's doing here? He just has people building wind and back. And he's at 409, right? Same with these guys. This is a really good wind map, right? Average wind is 12. So you can do that. And then also, there's still all the reclaim here. So instead of stalling on that, if you just had bought a res bot, you could even have one of your cons. Well, your cons is doing it now, so that's good. But you could have a res bot going around and they have way more build power, right? Res bots have 200, cons have 90. Vehicle cons have 90. Okay, good. We're getting the geo. So the problem with the geo is that you're going to e stall on it because it's 13,000. So it's going to take a long time. So something you can do, which I talked about before, is if you drop energy storage, it's way easier to get this and you won't e stall. All right. You've got all of your RD up front and your RD appears to be attacking. This is probably a grunt, right? Or like a tick. It's just too, too slow. It's a grunt just based off the speed. So you're attacking this and it's moving back and forth and you're missing it completely. You actually came up here and scouted, which I missed when I was looking at your base, but that's awesome. We know where things are. You don't need to attack that. Just ground attack here. Just attack that. Just attack that, right? Attacking this, you fired all these shots and none of them have done anything, right? None of them have hit. You saw a bit of what's here, but you also saw like there's a jammer there too. So if your RD can get close enough and kill the jammer, that's awesome. But there's only three LLTs here, right? So let's just look and see. There's one Wolverine, a Pounder, a Lasher, and a Brute, and his commander. You could probably kill all of that with what you have, right? 
your Janus, it might be a little bit harder over the channel, but if you just came like up here and then went like that, right? Your Janus can just pick apart all of this, but you don't know that because you didn't scout it. So always, always, always scout. Another thing you can do really early on, um, if you like you get there before him is you can drop like a beholder, the stealth cameras, like somewhere over here, or maybe like even right there, you can build them with your commander. They're a little energy um, demanding, especially like the cloak is uh, I think 20 a second or 10 a second. But if you get one there and you have vision, it's awesome. You can totally like chip away at him with this. But this is a situation where you could have just killed this guy, but you didn't just because you didn't have information. Yeah, and here's the grunt running back and forth. Okay, so now you're taking Max's awesome. Did we get our tier two? We did not get our T2 yet. So that's a big thing. Your economy is going to be way stronger when you get T2. Are we still making? Okay, so we stopped making units. We're about to overflow. If you're ever a frontliner and you're overflowing, it's nice to dump it into the rest of the team, but about 90% of the time, the best thing to do is dump it into into one of two people, either a frontliner who doesn't have metal and is struggling. Or more likely your techer, because your techer early on will always need more metal. Metal is the one thing that limits techers early, especially if he's trying to hand out tier two, if he's trying to scale to fusions, afus, anything like that. Okay, so you're building these walls, and I don't hate the walls because they definitely can block shots for this, but these dragon's claws that you spent all this money on, these haven't even fired once yet, right? And you don't need this much defense because we don't know what's there. So in this case, I think it would have... Also, this max is still unclaimed. Oh my god, and these are still unclaimed. What is that? One, two, three, four, five. So that's 10 metal a second. So... Yeah, that's six, okay. That's sixty metal total. Anyway, sixty metal. Uh, six, no, six hundred. Sorry. Uh, okay. You build a jammer here. I like that. But again, you're just kind of stalled out here. So, and you're gonna bring a mine layer. Okay. So I don't hate mines. I think you could totally mine like mine here maybe because you're concerned about that. Um. You could also maybe like mine around here in case the amphibious stuff comes this way or amphibious stuff comes this way, which could definitely be a concern. So you're losing a bunch of your front to one Wolverine and you aren't attacking it because it's in a jammer. But just because there's a jammer doesn't mean this is an invincibility, right? You can just run at it uh, like this one whistler. If he ran up, would probably give you vision. The pounder might be able to hit it, but you could probably get vision of it, and then your arty could fire. Worst case, your arty should run up and start killing these LLTs, and then they can back up. Okay, so 400 energy might be a little bit low to, to do T2, but I don't hate it. You are building advanced solars at the same time. So A solars, if, if your average wind is 12, a windmill per metal spent is about twice as effective as an A solar. The other issue with A solars is that they're 5,000 energy to build. So when you start building nanos and other things, you're going to drain a lot of energy. If you're building this at the same time, even though you want more energy production, you're just going to completely cripple your economy because you won't have the energy to actually burn your metal. And even if you have the build power, you can't use it. So I had already kind of said you should be building wind, wind here. But wind is so much better on this map for a, a bunch of reasons. And A solars generally aren't something that's great to spam unless it's a bad wind map. Or if you have a lot of build power, like if you had, I don't know, like six nanos here and you're like, oh, my God, I really need to bump my energy income up and I'll, I'll hold it for a bit. You can drop the A solars there just so that you can dump your metal into energy and kind of get your economy going. But A solars are almost 8,000 BP, right? And then once they're finished, they start producing 75 energy. Windmills are 1,600. 
And as soon as they're done, they produce anywhere from 2 to 16, but an average of 12 on this map. So you can just knock them out so much quicker than these A solars. The other thing that I forgot to mention that I really should have mentioned is you pretty much always need an E storage early game. I would say like even before five minutes is good sometimes. In this map specifically, you want an E storage because if you have more wind, it'll give you a little bit of a buffer on the wind. And then also frontline commander play is really reliant on energy because cloak is 100 energy a second if you aren't moving, 1000 energy a second if you are moving, and D gun is 500. So if you had an E storage and you had that extra 6000, you could literally cloak your commander and run him here and then like if you run up here and you see there's an army, you could just keep your commander cloaked, run him in, com bomb, kill an entire army here, and you'd be good. Or you could keep him like cloaked kind of in here, and if there's an attack, you could just degun the attack. Granted, you don't know what's here, but that's one of the reasons why you want it. So this is a little scary. Um, I don't think it's bad per se, because it's a little bit farther back, but if this gets Junoed, all these mines explode. So whenever you're putting mines down, just be really aware that you never want to put them in a place where you're going to have your own unit standing on them. There's already a jammer here, so it's likely that this is going to get Junoed when you play versus like players who build Junos. So something that's concerning is like if you have units running up here and he Junos right here and your units are standing on these mines, they all die. And I've actually had that before where you lose like 10,000 metal to one Juno missile because someone built a bunch of mines under your army and they were just running over it and then you got hit. So I would say these mines are not a bad choice, but I would say put them here or put them like around here to kind of like protect that side. You already have a force defending here. So if you're making mines, put the mines where you don't have a force defending. All right, so we kind of talked about your e-scaling there. Dude, these mexes are still unclaimed, and you still don't have T2, and it's 12 minutes. Um, really, really important to get... You You could have bought your T2 from this guy a while ago, and you would have had all of these mexes upgraded, and you probably would have had your Geo. Something else that I think I forgot to mention is you don't want to ever build anything next to a Geo like this, Generally speaking, because even though this guy doesn't have a big death radius, AGOs, which this guy's probably building, do. They have a massive death radius, right? And you always want the option of taking an AGO because it's super efficient for what it produces, right? It produces more, it's 1500 metal and it produces more than a fusion. But if you build it here, if you build an AGO here and it kills and it dies, it'll kill your stuff. So instead, I would say you could maybe build this like a little bit farther back or you could even build it up here. Up here is a little scary in case like if your water loses, it could get shelled by ships. But you could also build it like even a little bit closer to the front line. I think either of those would have been good. But when you build it right next to this, it's just scary, especially because like geos are always bombing targets. So if their air player comes in, like this and bombs it which is really common because geos are great bombing targets and good air players will try to attack um like areas that normally won't have um that are like harder to respond to so there's probably jammers over here and then he can just run in and then suddenly surprise and hit you here and your air player might not have time to respond it's super sketch all right, you've dumped all your metal, but you're overbuilding nanos. So there's kind of like a general rule where they say like, all right, you want like five nanos per uh, or one nano per five metal per, um, income, or sometimes people say 10 nanos per one, sorry, one nano per 10 metal income. For this, you just don't have the metal to build this, right? This is 2,900. You just sank 16 or 1260 into just nanos. And you're building other stuff over here. So in this one, you could probably drop like four nanos and then just do it. You don't need that many because you only have 26 metal a second, right? Your economy is pretty small, pretty weak. 
and again, we, we haven't scouted this, right? Look at all the openings here. You could go like this and scout, or you could even just run up and scout. Another thing too, um, even though T1 phase is over, you can totally go alligator, right? You can go, it's gonna have a T1 lab. You can go amphibious tank or pincer, not alligator. Sorry. You can go pincers. And if you went pincer, you could potentially do something where you, um, I would probably go like this, right? And you, you see that this guy has an army here. So if you looked at it, you could go, okay, his commander is there and his commander is there. If you send a bunch of pincers up here, you might be able to get into their base and do a bunch of damage. And amphibious units, generally speaking, have really good emp resist. See how it's 87% emp resist? It means they're much, much harder for shuries to stop. And so they're actually really effective raiding units. So I think you definitely could have done that. Instead, you're going to send your army down, which I like and I don't like. Your army totally could have just killed what's here. Oh, calm down. Um, but realizing that you're being afraid to break it, it's always great to throw your army into another person's lane if you can actually, you know, have an impact. So as soon as a commander goes down, you always want to try to get your calm there as soon as possible. Oh my God, there's unclaimed maxes here too. Your commander literally could have just walked and taken those. So his... Could have walked and taken those. Um, okay. I generally will always try to get a transport for my comm, like even if you're a frontliner, because you never know where you need to go, right? You don't see any air here. If you had a transport, you could pick up your comm and fly it here and secure these wrecks. The really scary thing about this attack here is that whenever you fight, you always want to think about wreck control because there's two commanders here, right? And so with those two comms dead, there's going to be a ton of reclaim. Here's 25, here's 750, right? And this fight is still happening. So, okay, you got some blitz going in. When you raid like this, always space them. If you space, it's harder to bomb. If you group like this, there is a chance that they might both get hit. But, okay, you send it up there. So you guys don't have wreck control here, which is concerning. And Red maybe could have come up and taken that, but he wasn't quite there. I like the Blitz running in. I would say, well, you guys didn't know, I guess, what was here before you traded. I would say, though, that you maybe could have tried to like hold this a little bit more or just get your commander here, right? If your commander gets here, you can either eat these wrecks or you can degun these wrecks. But that's so much metal. That's 2,500 metal. Okay, so you have T, T2, you don't, oh, okay, you bought T2, so you got T2 a little late um, from, from your ally, we talked about that, this is one of those situations, so I wouldn't open Ambassador here for a few reasons, the first thing I would do here is probably build like two more cons, because this one con is going to take forever to do other stuff, so you want another con that's here, that's going to upgrade all these mexes, and potentially upgrade that. Granted, you want your lab a little bit more. He could upgrade these mixes. He could upgrade that, right? And then you would have a con here that upgrades all of those. So you want two cons doing that. You also probably want a separate con that's boosting this. And then, especially if you're new, I would recommend always getting a rattlesnake if you need to protect something. So you can do that either by building a console who can make rattlesnakes or with a T2 con. A high ground rattlesnake, I would say like, here, for example, would be super impactful. Oh, uh, where's your guy? So see how your C is losing and you don't know what's here? If you just throw down a persecutor or a rattlesnake, right? You could put it, say, here, probably. It can shoot at ships going by there, which helps your C player a bit, even though I think he's more or less dead. And it can start shelling stuff over here. Right. And it's close enough that or it's far enough away that it's going to be harder for ships like only like I think destroyers could hit it there. It might need to be a little bit farther back, but like it'll be harder for frigates and destroyers to shoot it because it's high ground shooting low and it's farther back. So you could just build a rattlesnake and kind of control that area and that would help do it instead. Ambassadors are great things, but 
the problem with building the ambassador here is you still don't really know what's here. The only thing you know what's here is like you could kill all this with T1 RD. You just didn't scout it and didn't commit. So you don't need this yet because you don't know what's there. And if you build a rattlesnake instead up here, it's great. Along those lines, in a situation like this where like, let's say they're spam Junoing or like, I don't know, there's a bunch of RD here and it's killing everything here. Just build a gremlin. Gremlins are invisible, and especially early on, almost no one is going to have stealth detection on the front line. So if you built a gremlin, you could just roll him straight up here or even, you know, maybe something like that. And you could just get vision of all of this. And then you would know, hey, do I need to build an ambassador? Ambassadors are really scary to build first because they do nothing against units, right? You're much safer if you were to open, if you already have poor care, just open five Mausers instead. Mausers can hit units and they can still, still kill pork. And I'd even say probably go like Jag Mauser, right? Because that's a cheap early. You don't have big uh, income. You could just go Jag Mauser. You come up here and you could start chipping away at stuff until they fire back at you. But because you don't know, it's really hard to gauge what you should do, right? So in this situation, Gremlin is much, much better than that. And I would say instead of the Ambassador, which is not great versus units, build a Rattlesnake instead, because the Rattlesnake will give you the ability to chip at some of this, but it controls a lot more and helps your C, which is losing, and it can kill units. So your C is losing here, and that's definitely kind of a difficult thing. Um, as vehicles, I would say it's a bit harder as bots. You can go like platies or tumbleweeds, but again, if you rattlesnake there, or like if you were to rattlesnake here, the rattlesnake could totally shoot all this stuff and then give your player there a bit more time to respond. Um, alternatively, this is a great situation where, well, he does have destroyers. You might be able to cloak your calm, run him up and then detonate there and kill all of those, but you would need to fly there first. Okay. Let's speed this up a little bit. So you get your ambassador. So you're still not scaling energy, right? Um, and once you get into kind of like 17 minutes, you really want to be scaling a lot more than you are. So you either want the, you know, the people building wind and back, like, look at this guy. This guy is just spamming wind. Oops, let's turn this off and see. His wind gives him 1260, right? Which is way more than you have. And you have a geo. So just do that instead, because it's a really gradual way to scale on a map that has good wind. And their players here. So there's a lot here where like the game is calling kind of falling apart around you. And so I won't talk necessarily about reacting to those. So you did build some mines there. Cool. And like reacting to this. In a situation like this, this is another thing where it's really scary if you have ambassadors, right? If you have Mauser, if you have Mauser Jag, your Mauser Jag comes here and just kills this. What is this? Yeah, your Mauser Jag would literally just shred everything here and then you could push it back. You can't push it back with ambassadors, however. Okay, and you're going to use a console to make platypus, which I like, but I think that you don't necessarily need them. I think you could totally go platy and go like that. But it's a lot harder to use platypus if you've lost C. Because ideally, you'd want to do something kind of like this, but you can't go that way because there's a C player. And even if you want to go through here, it's a little concerning because the C player might come down and like press your position. So I'd say instead of building those, you could probably just rattle or something else. All right, and there's a push in here, so... So you do have Jags now, and your Jags are able to do a bit. And your Ambassadors are kind of chipping away at stuff over here. Wait, no, your Ambassadors are firing at units. Okay, good. So now you ground target. You always want to try to ground target them or give them vision. This is one of those things where they would be nowhere near as bad if you just had one Gremlin up here providing vision. Because when you see that, you can just ground target it, right? You can just go, hey, it's... Oh, no, you issued a fight command. Oh, no. No. Okay, good. We're going to back up. Let me shoot. So 
whenever you're playing frontline like this, let's pretend that this is like, an, the, you know, in the situation you're in, okay? We'll just take the situation you're in. You've looked at this, you're not sure if you can break it. You're like, okay, this is hard. In a situation like that, you wanna pork and scale. And so the way you scale is literally dropping a bunch of nanos, right? You can drop a nano block, and then on one side you're gonna have fusions or AFUs, and on the other side you're gonna have converters. Something that's really important when you're playing front is to recognize when there's no easy way to win on the front, right? So can you kill him with units? Uh, probably not. Can you go help your ally and kill there? Mm, probably not. In situations like that, you can just kind of start scaling. Okay, and I take it back because this guy is super new and so you're able to do damage here. Wait, so... Okay, so you basically kill this. Oh, and you don't have the energy production to keep pumping stuff out. So, bulls are awesome units. For raiding, I would say that um, jags are probably better. And one thing that's super important is... Why are these not killing that? So next time ground target that so that it dies when you're using bulls you need to kite bulls are not very tanky right tigers have more health than they do so bulls do more dps but tigers are way tankier and so if you get up close and you're fighting like multiple things it's bad so you need to kite with bulls and in a situation like this you're like okay like you would need to scale okay so your platies came in i like this probably needed more of them to really do damage but the concept is there and i think that's awesome um you know if you had had more platies uh, i don't even know if you wouldn't be able to do that much but i like the idea like the rating idea i think you just don't have the economy to actually make that play and go in and do stuff so you lost your c and whenever you lose your c like this you're gonna have to like there are certain maps where it'll just happen you know where it's like okay you lost your c like straight as an example like as a frontliner you need to kind of adjust you're gonna have to give up this position and so a lot of times it makes sense to like start reclaiming stuff and then just build farther back this is actually a situation where yeah so if you had a rattle right here it could kill all of these oh uh, it'd be in range of some of them so maybe a little bit farther back, but like a rattle right here could shoot all of this and would accomplish a ton. But now you're going to get pushed back. You have a ton of metal. Um, and if you look at your team, your team doesn't have a ton of metal. So I would say either dump it into your tech or dump it maybe into your red player so that he can make units and fight there. When you're in... Oh, God. So they won C and now they're going to attack amphibiously. Um, you see that. So if you had a minefield here, that would be nice. This is another situation where if you have a transport, you can just pick up your comm and run here. Aside from that, good reactions would probably be to um, spam bulls to kill these. But your commander is going to be the best thing. You need your commander to run up here and do stuff. Uh, alternatively, you need to chain spam your air player who hopefully has where is your air player who hopefully has something that can help with that right so he's going to bring fighters which will do a bit but that's how it goes jags i don't actually know if jags fight into salamanders very well i don't think they do so this is a situation where if you flew your comm up or started walking your comm up i think it'd be much much better but it looks like your team is going to bail you out <coughs> all right let's speed this up i think a lot of my later comments won't be anywhere near as useful just because your your actual economy was a little crippled just because you didn't e-scale and take all the mexes um so if you had done that you'd be in a better position but let's see your base dies whenever your base dies like this you just need to spam ping for res bots because you can res one you'd want to eat all that metal and then two you want to res these and then you want to keep building and you're gonna oh you're gonna serb serb isn't bad here because you've already lost this right and so you're gonna hold it um but you need to start scaling e and you could scale e with wind back here uh or you know you have the build power you could probably throw down some advanced solars here if you weren't e stalling which would definitely help you say who want 4k metal i don't eat i don't mind so 
it's not a bad thing, but generally, like when you want to recover it, you need this energy. So if someone gives you a res bot and you can go res these, that's actually huge. Also, well, not in this situation, but generally you always want to eat your solars like past like 10 minutes or so. All right, and this serb is gonna do work. So you got attacked from amphibious tanks once here and you see more there. Something that you can do to kind of help with that, although it's a little harder because you lost C. Um, if you haven't lost C, you can drop jellyfish or an enemy. Sorry, jellyfish are the core ones, which will help. And here you can actually drop jellyfish and they can shoot land units that are trying to cross. Uh, you can also actually salamanders break walls, but you could do like a T2 wall somewhere there, which would give you time and they'd have to go around. But it looks like these Maras are going to end the game. So you're bombing there and you're bombing there. And actually, he didn't lose as much. But let's see. What's this eco diff? It's actually not as bad as I thought it was going to be. But you guys are kind of losing everywhere. So I, well, I guess we could speed it up and just see how it works. I assume because once you last see, they're just going to be raiding in. So you kind of need to figure out a way to counter it to like try to break there. Um, let's see. You guys are catching up in eco, but you're losing all of your fronts. And now there's T3 running into your bases. Okay, so at this point, I think the game's kind of like gone out of control and it's I mean, it's definitely winnable, but for what you have, it's going to be super difficult. So main takeaways. Um, you want to optimize your start, right? So you want to do a center one here. You want to build max, 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 solar, solar. Or if it's a, if the wind is good, the wind wasn't good, but if the wind is good, you want to go, your commander's here, you go max, max, wind, max, wind, wind, wind. Then you drop your lab and then your commander needs to boost your lab before you walk. Boost out one or two cons or whatever so that you have the build power. And then... Once one of those cons needs to probably should have taken these maxes and then should have just been building wind the whole game. That would have given you the energy income to actually build the stuff you want to build. Uh, in your early start, big thing was you didn't scout. You built all of these defenses, but you didn't know what was here. The ways to get around that, you could have whistlered. You could have done frontline radar. You could have earlier on snuck your commander up and put a camera. Um, you could also just have ignored that and just gone up here with the Janus that you had and then come in here and you would have been able to kill it all. So try to be more aggressive and try to get vision so you know what to actually build. Uh, at T2, all you needed was one gremlin. One gremlin comes up here and shows you everything that's there and you can kill it. Early on, I didn't like your ambassador play as much because I felt I feel like ambassadors are used for one thing, which is really killing pork. It's much better if you would have just gone like Jag Mauser and the Mausers probably could have chipped at that and they would have been able to respond to other things. I did like that you tried to help your ally down here, but I think that you could have just as easily broken your lane. And if you had done it with just like a bunch of Mausers and run down here, you would have just killed this guy's position. Mausers, especially early on, are incredibly strong. There's a few other things like I think you probably could have just tick spammed into here for vision as well, but that's something that we'll cover in um, another replay review. So. Yeah, now they have a 20k advantage, and I assume you guys will have to tap out soon. Here come the demons to raid. And this is the end of the game. The dude spamming Sheldon's made it work. So this is you, right? At the bottom of... Um, no, is that energy? Hold on. Energy produced. Yeah. So you and Tan, neither of you really skilled your uh, your economies that much. And I'd say that combined with build power is probably like the two biggest things you need to work on. On a wind map like this, spam wind and just kind of have a little bit more organi organization and thought with your build power. And then you would have had the units to break this. And don't be afraid. Oh, God. Don't be afraid to... Um, you know, actually go try and attack and scout and see what's here. This guy, for the majority of the game, had almost nothing here, and you could have very easily just charged up and killed him. 
or potentially like run around and then killed his base right if he had all this stuff here if the c player was like over here fighting and you had like say 10 blitz or something you probably could have run up there and then killed they didn't have defenses anyway that is it if you have questions uh hit me up on discord